So because a lot of polls are currently showing that Mike Bloomberg is a viable contender for the 2020 nomination, a lot of us are grappling with the prospect of a Mike Bloomberg nomination or a presidency. I think he probably wouldn't get that far because he'd get clobbered by Donald Trump. But still, the fact that he's able to make it this far, like we have to ask ourselves a lot of questions. There's got to be some introspection about our democracy and how we let it get to this point. So we're asking ourselves all types of questions, but the guys over at Pod Save America, they are taking this in a different direction. Rather than saying, you know, what institutional mechanisms allowed this to happen, they're blaming the left, essentially, for Mike Bloomberg's rise. You see, because if everyone is a centrist, then basically no one is a centrist. So you know how Republicans call everything socialist, including Obama and, you know, Hillary Clinton? Well, that is, you know, an attack that becomes less persuasive over time. So what he's going to tell you in this clip is that we on the left have essentially done the same thing with everyone, and now people aren't going to take us seriously when we explain how Mike Bloomberg is a centrist. This is truly ridiculous, but nonetheless, we'll let them take it away. Look, I think the other thing that's tough here is there's a lot of folks on, on the left who spent a lot of this campaign telling us that Pete Buttigieg is uh, is some centrist chill and not a good enough Democrat. And Joe Biden is not a good enough Democrat. And Amy Klobuchar is not a good enough Democrat. And it's like now we have someone in Mike Bloomberg who really isn't a good enough Democrat, who really is a moderate Republican. And because a lot of times they spent this entire campaign telling us that good mainstream Democrats like Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar and Joe Biden aren't good enough for us, it's going to be harder for a lot of people to believe that that's true about Mike Bloomberg when it is true about Mike Bloomberg. This is the fable we will tell our children. A boy who cried centrist. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now now hold, because I've got one more clip to show you. Um, I don't have the full context for this. Nonetheless, um, I've got to play this. These people on the left who, are, who have large Twitter followings, look, I know you don't like us. I know you're going to keep fucking tweeting at us. Fine, do whatever the fuck you want. But if you want your candidate to win, you've got to shape up. What do you mean shape up? We're winning. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Uh, let me let me just put things into perspective because this podcast features you know former Obama alum, right? You won because of us. We were part of that Obama coalition. We were called Obama boys back in two thousand eight, and now we're the Bernie Bros, and we're winning, right? We're beating the centrists. So when you tell us to shape up, I don't know what that means. You shape up. You fall in line. Fuck are you talking about? Now uh, this is just it really is an incredible argument to make because. You can't possibly be this stupid, and I don't think that he is. I think he's just being disingenuous. Um, Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg, we call them centrists because they are quite literally centrists, and if we tried to call them, you know, progressives or socialists, I think that they'd push back themselves against that claim because they are presenting themselves as centrists. So what are we supposed to do? Just accept that they are progressive? I mean, that term already has been watered down, but what does that even mean? I mean, we are ideologically, diametrically opposed to what they stand for, and vice versa, right? I mean, we want Medicare for all, they're fighting against it. We want to cancel student debt, they're fighting against that. So what are we supposed to do? We are at odds with each other, ideologically speaking, so are we just supposed to say, well, you know what, because they have that D next to their name, they're great. And to say, well, you know what, Mike Bloomberg now is not going to be taken seriously as a centrist since you guys call everyone centrist. Except the Democratic Party is a fucking centrist party, you dipshit. Look at the parties in the UK and all throughout Europe. Their right-wing parties are ideologically more in line with Democrats than they are with Republicans. Like the Tories in the UK, Boris Johnson, for example, he may want to privatize portions of Britain's national health system, but he still believes that, you know, basic health care should be free at the point of service. There are Democrats who don't just not believe that, but they're not even hiding that. They are openly running against Medicare for All. Pete Buttigieg attacks Medicare for All every other day, and the reason why he's attacking it after previously supporting it is because he took money from these large corporations, the health insurance industry, Big Pharma, and now he's doing their bidding. Like, to not call that out is disgusting. You are misinforming your audience if you're not telling them about that. So who watches this show? Like, that's my question. Who watches this trash? 
because you are just as bad as mainstream media. So why would you seek out an alternative non-mainstream media source if you're going to just espouse the same fucking things that you hear on MSNBC? This is fucking stupid. And you have to understand that nuance is a thing that exists, right? Amy Klobuchar and, you know, uh, Mayor Pete may be right here ideologically, and they're centrist, but you can still say that there's differences between them and Mike Bloomberg. Yes, he is demonstrably worse because he is further to the right than them. He's just right wing. I wouldn't say that Mike Bloomberg is, you know, um, centrist. I'd probably say that he is about where Donald Trump is or the average Republican is, ideologically speaking. But just because he's worse than Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg doesn't make our criticisms of them any less clear. They are clear. You just don't want to listen. You want to rich explain to people on your fucking ivory tower. And because you worked for Obama, you know everything about politics. No, when you worked for Obama throughout that process, how many seats did Democrats lose? A thousand. More than a thousand. Okay, and we were part of that coalition. So you don't get to just talk at us and claim that you know everything. And here's the reality. You have a large, large portion of the left, namely millennials and Zoomers, who are registering to vote for the very first time who will not come out and support a Democrat who they don't believe in. 2016 proved that. So you can either accept that if the party wants to remain viable, they have to shift left, or you can just try to squeeze centrists and the left together in one party and see how that continues to work out. You have Republicans who are united. All you have to do is throw some red meat to their immigrant-hating base and they love it. They don't care who. They'll vote for a fucking turd if you put a little, you know, toothpick in that turd with a sign that says, I hate immigrants. They'll vote for whatever. But on the left, we actually have standards. People around this country are not going to stand in line for hours to vote if they don't believe that a candidate is going to do much for them. If they think the difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, for example, isn't large enough to warrant them getting out and voting, they're going to stay home. And the fact that you are denigrating people who are calling out not just the centrism of Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, and Joe Biden, but actual corruption, conflicts of interest with the financial contributions that they're taking, I mean, it just shows that you are an elitist. You're an elitist. You don't care about the plight of poor people. You don't care that there's been this ongoing class warfare that's been waged against the poor by elites. You don't care that people are struggling and they're desperate currently. You don't care. You're just saying, how dare you criticize Democrats, vote blue no matter who, uh, fall in line, and see, you criticized Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar and all these shitty Democrats, so, you know, all the shit libs that I love too much, and now, you know, we have a real threat, and you kind of ruined that. Thanks, lefties. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. This is a primary, and there is a civil war that's going on in the Democratic Party. If the left doesn't win that civil war, then Republicans will be in control. They will hold on to power for decades to come because you have millennials and Zoomers who are not excited to vote for someone like Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, or Joe Biden, who is offering them fuck all. Okay, you have people dying, thousands of people every fucking year because they don't have health insurance. I'm sorry that you're mad at them for not coming out to vote blue no matter who when, you know, they are still going to be in the same predicament on the verge of bankruptcy due to medical debt or die because they don't have health insurance. I'm sorry. Yes, there may be a difference between Democrats and Republicans. We don't want to perpetuate that false equivalence, but you've got to understand the way that voters perceive this is I'm not going to come out and pay the cost of voting, standing in line for hours, sacrificing my time, maybe taking off of work if the payoff isn't going to be worthwhile. People are self-interested. They will vote for candidates that are going to do good things for them. Amy Klobuchar isn't saying what she'll do for voters. She's just saying you can't have Medicare for all. Pete Buttigieg clearly doesn't give a flying fuck about any voters. He just wants to be president because, you know, he, he wants to be the next Obama. You have Joe Biden, who is just running because he thinks he can, you know, run away with it because he was the former VP. I mean, you have people who clearly aren't representing the interests of working class Americans. And then finally, you have someone like Bernie Sanders. And for the first time in almost a decade, you have people energized to support him. And what do you do? You dog on them for daring to compare contrast the candidates 
shameful. This is absolutely shameful. This is elitist garbage. And if you listen to this podcast, turn it off. You might as well put on CNN because you're going to get the same political analysis as you'd get from these elitists.